Looks like we're uh, recording. So I'm uh, I'm using StreamYard here to do a little bit of recording because I want to do some on-screen stuff, uh, share War Diary with you. In fact, it looks like we can't quite see all of War Diary. So I'm going to move oh, my browser so that I can make adjustments here and you can see things. And uh, also so that I can see things at the same time. So this is uh, the 22nd edition of War Diary, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and what I want to is just to have to just make a couple of adjustments here with how I've got stuff laid out on my screen so that I can see what you see. So I'm just going to put the whole magazine up and we can do that. And that way I can focus on the magazine and not worry about where my little old head is. So welcome back to the big board. We'll take a quick overview. Well, the first thing, obviously, there's the editorial uh, comments from Roy. And let me get this window out of the way, please. Okay, so uh, highlights the fact that there will indeed be uh, a game coming out, which I think has already been announced, and I popped that out on my on my blog and uh, Facebook page, but. For those who don't know, 1914 Deluxe, it's, a reprint, it's going to be a redevelopment reprint, uh, Hell Unleashed, uh, it's designed by Mike Nagel. So uh, I think that will be uh, that will be interesting for everybody. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. So uh, we'll see how that all works. Uh, there's some other commentary going on about uh, in here talking about the uh, Charles Roberts Awards and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm sure everyone's update on all that, all the little pseudo political things going on there and changes and whatnot. And let's see what's actually in the magazine. So we've got a very interesting article that I, I just finished reading. Uh, and I'm Art, if I pronounce your name incorrectly, I apologize. Lupanichi, I believe it is. Uh, we'll have we'll sort of skim through that article real quickly. Have a look at that. Uh, you know, obviously, Art's got a very deep background in both uh, TRC and Russia Besieged. He's the designer of Russia Besieged and a, and a former principal of the L2 uh, gaming company. Uh, nice article by Vance von Boris. I did not read all of this, but the net of it is that, uh, that uh, Invasion of Malta is a pretty sophisticated game. And it's not a game for the uh, the light of heart or the uh, introductory war game. I would uh, encourage you to avoid it from that perspective. But if you're looking for a strategic slash tactical challenge, I think there's a lot going on there. I did not spend too much time on Corvette Commander. It's a solitaire game. It's a naval game. None of my core competency or interest. Uh, so I, I didn't spend a lot of time on it. But Ray seems to have done a pretty comp comprehensive job of talking about the game. So that was nice. Uh, and then we've got Paul uh, as wonderfully written and verbose and entertaining as always, uh, talking about the Italian campaigns in North Africa and Russia. Uh, I think that's, a, and using games as a metaphor to explore the history. <clears throat> always fun to read his stuff. He's very entertaining. Uh, we might spend a little bit of time across the Boog uh, uh, reading uh, and, and discussing uh, Arrigo's uh, views on that particular title. I have uh, diametrically opposite opinions of that game than he does. So maybe we can touch on that a little bit. Malta Besieged, have not had a chance to uh, dig into that, but once again, solitaire game that's probably not going to be in my wheelhouse. And designer notes by Mike Nagel for, uh, for the 1914 Deluxe game. And there's a handful of uh, capsule reviews, which are pretty interesting. So let's, let's jump in. Some, you know, first of all, fantastic cover art. I'm loving this, right? I, I just, just the up close detail, uh, pretty exciting uh, stuff. And then as we get into the magazine, we see some more artwork and, and photography that we perhaps wouldn't see uh, on a regular basis. I like these kind of close ups and, and stuff like that. It's pretty nice. I'm hoping you guys can see this all okay. Uh, so, Enjoy. I, I love the long format of the articles in War Diary. So uh, I think that's one of the one of the nice things about the magazine. So here we go. Uh, you know, uh, we, we 
dig into uh, Art's uh, analysis here uh, of the two game systems, uh, talking about the different combat results tables and movement and uh, the orders of battle in the standard game for both, and then lots of diagrams here uh, demonstrating uh, a variety of differences. Now, the two game systems are similar but different. Uh, you could, if you've ever played the Russian campaign, you could probably pick up Russia Besieged and be pretty comfortable with the rules pretty quickly. There's some more nuances to movement and combat and the combat phases and things like that, but uh, it feels pretty comfortable uh, when you look at it. All right, uh, so like I said, this goes on and on and on. There's uh, lots of detail in here. Uh, discusses the weather, of course, always a big, ish, big issue in Eastern Front games when that first winter mud and snow turn, uh, turns arrive, particularly when you're dealing with monthly uh, monthly turns or, or bi-monthly turns, as the case may be. Just scroll through this here for you. So, and then uh, we can get on to, and so I, I think uh, next month or next next issue there'll be uh, a second a second article uh, coming from Art as well that will continue the comparisons from there. Uh, I've got the uh, I've got the uh, where is it here? No, oh, it doesn't mention it. Uh, Russia besieged has a Finnish front expansion coming out. I've got that on pre order. I'm pretty excited about that. See what how that. Well, we'll all play out. All right. Uh, challenges and solutions of uh, the invasion Malta, right? Uh, once again, interesting photography and a long article by Vance really getting into the details of things. And, and I think this, uh, this kind of sums things up for this article here. Despite all my solutions and despite much simplifying and despite uh, limiting the time frame of the game, I have one playtester who declares that even though it's not a monster game, the game is not for beginners, it requires experienced players. He added that the game can be deceptive deceptive because of its it's such a strategic challenge. And you find yourself in an infantry battle with a fight uh, for every hex. You may agree, and I hope you will enjoy the challenge of this game. So uh, that's something to have a look at. I may go back. I looked at this title, the pre-order, had it on pre-order, cancelled it. I may have to go back after reading these design notes and revisit things. Uh, some of Vance's uh, uh, designs can be awesome fun, and others I've, I've just not enjoyed as much. All right, a little bit of advertising. This is a solitaire game that I mentioned. Once again, some glorious artwork and uh, and stuff going on. I guess that's a, a bifold open out there when you've got the actual magazine. So. Uh, your classic solitaire setup where you've got the ship and all the different bits and pieces that can be damaged. And then you've got your solitaire map where you go on your missions and off you go. Uh, I think there's some, some quite funny quotes here uh, in Paul's article that I, I need to show you uh, here. I love this one. Egypt and Operation Compass. The best we can do is the worst that can happen. Uh, probably a nice uh, summation of the Italians in World War II. But he brings a couple of different games to the table, uh, Desert War, and uh, what else, Better Form. And uh, unfortunately, he didn't play the TCS Ariete. That would have been fun if you had to play that, because uh, that covered uh, Bia El Gubi uh, pretty nicely. And uh, that was a, a pretty interesting battle for the Italians, where they, they did doing some, some butt kicking of the Brits. Uh, Totten Sontag from lock and load i played that long long time ago i didn't mind that game at all i thought it was quite good and let's see then of course we move on to he deals with the italians in stalingrad and uh, stalingrad 42 no less uh using using that particular uh game to explore i got some nice conclusions there and some quotes and uh details on where he got all his data from so it's all very good now the Boog, uh, the Boog River. Uh, uh, Arrigo said that you know there were people being snarky about how long the game takes to play and uh, how involved, uh, maybe how involved it is or whatever. You know, I was probably one of those people. I think, uh, I think Mo and I played three times live uh, on a Friday night, uh, and it took a long, long, long time to play a turn. Uh, 
there, I've worked out there are over a thousand die rolls to be made to play the game uh, in, to its conclusion. Uh, that is uh, just a lot for the level of detail and narrative that is uh, created and mechanics that are presented. And I, I feel like that this, perhaps this is uh, glossing over a little bit here, some of the work that has to be done. There's a lot of good historical notes in here that uh, that's uh, that shared by the reviewer. I think I'm certainly impressed with all of that, but it does gloss over the fact that uh, th there's a Euro aspect to this game uh, with these tracks that where you've got to keep, you know, you're, you're tracking bits and pieces and there's die rolls for this and die rolls for that. And it's just a lot of die rolls for action points. And then die rolls for something else. And then you've got some chip pull, which is nice, uh, keeps the combat, uh, uh, chances of things occurring, uh, and the multipliers that are applied to the combat factors, uh, keeps that all very interesting and, uh, replayable but you're probably dissuaded from wanting to replay it because it takes so dang long to get through the turns, which I think if that, uh, if the mechanics around the uh, command points and action points that are used to activate formations were cleaned up or changed, I think uh, you would have a much, much better game because the combat in of itself is quite interesting. Uh, the movement and and all of the rest of it less so for us we uh we abandoned play after a while uh so i i think i think there's a justifiable sense to me that there's an awful lot of die rolling going on uh now i guess if you're playing a post it's only 500 die rolls so that's maybe better uh but if you're playing solo like the majority of us are then we're looking at uh we're looking at a thousand die rolls to get through a game or 1100 or more uh, thereabouts. So I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I did the quick math on it. Uh, so good game mechanically, interesting history representation. I found the artwork to be a little overly, uh, vibrant, uh, probably a lot of pastels going on there. Uh, the satin finish, sitting down at the table there's lots of little glare off the map uh from the counters the counters are very slippery they're they're sliding over the place because you've got to stack these guys up uh we did make some errors when we played you know full disclosure and we did uh, fix all of those but generally speaking i found the game to be interesting but tedious in ter in terms of the length of gameplay that's required to get uh, uh the game done so a lot of squeeze for not a lot of juice and uh but it is pretty so it's got that going for it all right so some more ads well, it looks like de has decided to do all its advertising budget in one magazine so there you go uh multi besieged a review so uh, a long detailed review here i have not read all of this so i can't really uh i can't offer any uh input or commentary here but uh, I know that John does a lot of good uh, reviews, so probably well worth a read. And then designer notes for 1914 Deluxe, which will be good too. Uh, I, I have uh, had a quick look at that. And I'm not a big World War I guy, but this might just be, I'm trying to scale, scroll down here. Looks like this. What's going on? Well, we are stuck, goodness me. Um, oh, my, my PC is having a poopy time all right well i guess i'm locked my my browser is locked so that's no good uh, here we go all right uh so pass in review like we can get down to these guys now real quickly someone had a look at uh verdun on the volga the stalingrad uh, uh, game i've seen a lot about that the last stand games i've i've not uh don't have an opinion on it i'm a big fan of salerno 43 i think it's a great introductory war game very clean set of rules, super, super tight, very good. And uh, someone did a, it looks like someone did a review on the Guadalcanal War Diary reboot uh, that they uh, they released that Martin Spetz uh, and did a quick little review on that. Quite like I quite like that game. It's got a lot going for it. Uh, disappointing with the maps being A, as big as they are, and B, sort of cut right in the middle where all the action is, but that is what it is. That's a, a printing limitation. Someone reviewed the ammo crates from uh, Lock and Load. Well, maybe that's an ad. 
anyway, I like their, I like these MO crates. You get three trays in a box and you can put your own labels on them. Very cool. And then there's uh, someone had a look at uh, cases. I guess someone must be looking at different ways to store things. Oh, here we go. So Martin didn't do a review on labeling. Oh, it's just how he organized games. Okay, well, there you go. I obviously haven't read that there. Uh, I just finished playing uh, the, uh, well, most of the uh, Holissa uh, battle here. I'm getting ready to set up for Miro uh, for this. I've got a pre-production copy of First Victories. Very interesting system. Uh, looking forward to uh, uh, Kim Kanga's new design as well. So lots of good stuff going on in this magazine. I think that, let me just uh, do this. I think that War Diary magazine, and I've been saying this for a while now, I'm just going to move this back up here so I can uh, look at you guys instead of looking down. Uh, I think the War Diary magazine, now that it's particularly now it's gone to PDF, is one of the best day for money uh, magazines around, uh, particularly given that it's independent as well. So it's not uh, a house magazine like C3I. And I know you're all going to say C3I is independent, but it's really not. It's 90, 95% GMT content. Uh, obviously, Paper Wars is, uh, is Compass magazine uh, oriented despite the fact that it does have a lot of other, uh, a lot of other stuff, but there, there's mostly house magazines available. And this is one of the few independent ones other than battles. And unfortunately battles really doesn't seem to be publishing very much anymore. So war diary has uh, stepped into the fray and, uh, and jumped in and done a good job of it. So I'm uh, pretty happy with them. All right. There you have it. That's all I wanted to share. I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview. If you haven't subscribed, I think it's 20 or $30 a year, or maybe even less for, for the, uh, the PDF version. Subscribe for a year and try it out and see if you like it. It's well worth it. All right. All the best. Peace out.